Hey guys, I wanted to make this video to walk you through the hardware for the new Google Nexus 7 2013 right here. And as soon as you take this out of the box, you will be amazed with just how good it feels in one hand. Asus and Google really did a good job with this Nexus 7. It feels 10 times better in terms of the build quality and just everything feels better than the original Nexus 7. It feels more premium and more well built, I guess I, is the only way I can put it. In terms of the weight and thickness, it comes in at 8.7 millimeters thick and it weighs 290 grams. Comparing that to the original Nexus 7, which came in at 10.5 millimeters thick and, two, and 340 grams, it is thinner and lighter than the original and that is definitely noticeable. It's also lighter than the uh, iPad mini, which comes in at 308 grams, but it isn't quite as thin, which I think it, I think the iPad mini comes in at 7.2 millimeters thick. But um, nonetheless, it feels absolutely fantastic in the hand. The weight distribution on this tablet is amazing. It just feels fantastic all the way through. It isn't kind of heavy at the top and light at the bottom. It feels the same weight all the way through, which is actually kind of hard to do. I'll just walk you through exactly where everything is. On the left side, you don't have any buttons or anything. On the top, you have your headphone jack right here. On the right, you have a power button and the volume rockers, which I just wanna mention feel really strong and really sturdy. They don't feel like they're gonna break anytime soon. Underneath that, you've got a microphone. You can see that little hole there. On the bottom, you've got your USB connection to charge it. This also doubles as a slim port, so you can have a slim port cable, plug it into your TV and have the display mirrored to your TV. And on the back, you can see we've got those uh, dual speakers. You've got a speaker on the right here, stereo speakers, I should say, and a speaker on the left, which is actually cut into two speakers because of that USB slot there. Not USB slot, sorry, the USB port. You've also got a five megapixel camera now on the back and a 1.2 megapixel camera on the top. In terms of the overall design, guys, not that much has changed. You can see the original Nexus 7 on the right here. There are some small changes that do make quite a big difference though, and you can see the original Nexus 7 has this kind of silver bezel, which I'm not really a big fan of. It kind of makes it look a little bit cheap, and you can see next to the new Nexus 7, the 2013, it does look a little bit cheap. This looks a lot more professional, and you can imagine kind of someone, you know, in a business thing kind of carrying this around and not looking at a place, whereas this one just looks a little bit cheaper. In terms of the bezels, if I turn on both displays here, you can see the bezels quite clearly. The new Nexus 7 does still have bezels. You can see they are a little bit slimmer on uh, each side, but I kind of like the bezels. The bezels, once you start to use it, it really is the only place you can uh, rest a thumb without touching the display. And they are smaller than the uh, original Nexus 7, which is nice, but once you use it, you will realize that the bezels are really kind of important. They are the only place you can kind of rest your fingers when playing games or just resting it while holding it with one hand and not messing around with the screen. So that's not a big deal for me. In terms of the other thing that's kind of changed with this is the back material. You can see the new Nexus 7 has a soft plastic back material, which isn't very grippy. It's kind of a slippery but it just feels nicer on the hand. The original Nexus 7 has this kind of grippy material, which feels like a fake leather and you can feel the kind of contours, but it just doesn't quite look as nice. And again, it just looks a little bit cheaper in comparison to the new Nexus 7. One thing I will mention about this material on the new Nexus 7 is it does scratch really easily. I got a scratch on the first day. You can see that next to the S on the uh, Nexus logo there. You can see that. All I did was put it next to my bedside table and it scratched. So. If you're worried about scratches, make sure you get a case. But definitely an improvement in terms of the overall design on the new Nexus 7. Yeah, let me uh, just put this on top and you can actually see the difference in the thickness here between the original Nexus 7 on the top and the 2013 on the bottom. It is pretty big difference. The tablet, the 2012 tablet on the top is quite a thick beast. You can see that there compared to the tablet on the bottom, the 2013. Everything is just better. It's it's a really nice upgrade. There's no two ways about that. If I show you the iPad mini now, don't forget the iPad mini has a bigger screen and a different aspect ratio. We'll put the Nexus 7 2013 on top so you can see the difference there in the aspect ratio and the thinness, really not that much between them, but the iPad mini is slightly thinner there. You can see that. But in terms of what feels better in one hand, you can see the Nexus 7 feels better. Well, for me, it feels better in one hand just because it's just a little bit lighter and it's not quite as long to have in one hand. You can see there I can 
struggle to put my whole hand around the iPad mini, I do not struggle to put my whole hand around the Nexus, and that's because of that aspect ratio, but that kind of depends what you want. I've also got my Nexus 4 here, so you can see how it looks against a four inch display. So that's the kind of size difference there. And you can also see the thickness. Nexus 4 is quite a thick beast. You can see that. Moving on to the screen, and this by far is the best upgrade for me. I was amazed by this screen, guys. The resolution is 1920 by 1200, so that is above 1080p. And everything about this display is amazing. It is an IPS display. It's pretty much the brightest display you can get right now, I think at 580 nits, so it's easily viewable outside, and if I just put it on max brightness, you'll probably be blinded by that. But it just looks amazing at full brightness. That won't be coming through on the camera, but everything is super sharp. This display tops the charts for contrast and some other stuff as well, guys. It beats the Apple iPad 4 in terms of contrast and stuff like that. They have done really well with this display. It's absolutely fantastic. So amazing upgrade there. And you can view 1080p content natively. So that's fantastic. In terms of the internals, now you've got the Snapdragon S4 Pro. It's a little bit confusing actually because it's not the same S4, whoops, it's not the same S4 Pro that's in my Nexus 4 right here. These, the Nexus 4 uses Crate 200 cores. This uses Crate 300 cores, which is the same that's in the Snapdragon 600. So it's actually a, an underclocked Snapdragon 600 rather than a S4, an S4 Pro. It also has the Adreno 320 GPU. Because of the size of this and the surface area of this, it does not overheat and it doesn't throttle while playing games. So games are very smooth on it. I will be making loads of other reviews for that. But yeah i'm just amazed by the hardware when i'm holding the nexus the original nexus 7 and the new nexus 7 in the other hand they feel so different they don't even feel like they're designed by the same people both of these are made by asus but you can just tell asus had a lot more time on this nexus 7 than they did with the original it just feels a hell of a lot better it feels to me like they've caught up with apple's build quality here it feels the same sort of build quality to the apple ipad that's how good it feels. And the screen, well, this screen just blows the iPad mini screen out of the water completely. You know, this needs a retina display compared to this because this just looks so damn sharp. And I will be doing more videos on the screen specifically, but yeah, it's just absolutely amazing. So yeah. In terms of storage, guys, you've got a 16 gigabyte model or a 32 gigabyte model. I think it only comes in Wi-Fi right now. 3G will be available at one point but not right now. It's 200 pounds for the uh, for the 16 gigabyte model, which is the one I bought right here, and an extra 40 pounds for the 32 gigabyte model. It depends what you're gonna use your tablet for to whether or not you need that space. If you wanna chuck a lot of movies on there and a lot of games, maybe you should go for the 32 gigabyte model. But um, yeah, in terms of the 3G model, don't forget, having more radio, having an actual cell phone radio on it will make it probably a little bit thicker and it'll also probably make it a little bit heavier, but I doubt by a lot. Moving on to the battery, this actually comes with a 3950 milliamp hour battery, which is actually a little bit less than the original Nexus 7, even though it has a higher resolution display and a stronger 1.5 gigahertz processor, it's slightly underpowered when it comes to the battery. I haven't actually seen how long it lasts. I will be doing my battery tests on it and we'll see how it how it holds up. But in terms of software optimization, it'll probably last about the same as the original Nexus 7, maybe a little bit less. We'll have to wait and see depending on your usage. But it's, it's a little bit disappointing that they didn't put a bigger battery in it, but I guess they just wanted to keep it as thin and as compact as possible. So stay tuned guys, because I'll be making loads more videos on this. I'll be doing all my reviews, like the browser reviews, gaming reviews, and anything else anyone wants to see. So let me know if you've got anything specific you want me to test out. Yeah, peace out.